Welcome back to another cool tool show and tell. Today my guest is Alex Glow. Alex creates IoT projects and videos for Hackster.io, an online community for hardware developers. And if you've been paying attention to the maker world at all, you've, been, you've come across Alex's projects. She's made uh, smart holographic cameras, uh, brainwave powered wings, and Archimedes the robot owl, her companion often. If you see her out and about, she's got a little cute robot owl that sits on her shoulder. Anyway, Alex, thank you for joining me today. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. I'm right. excited. Great. Well, let's uh, let's get down to it. What did you bring to show us? I brought Programmable Air. It is a fantastic kit for Arduino Nano. Uh, it comes with one, and it does uh, pneumatics for Arduino. Pneumatic air control as an yeah. Arduino add-on is something that seems pretty new. Uh, talk to me about how this came about or how you, how it came to you. Yeah, so it's designed for soft robots, and uh, I met the person who designed it, Amitabh Srivastava. Uh, but I guess first, actually, Crowd Supply sent us one, and I was like, this seems really cool. I saw uh, him present at a few different events, like Crowd Supply Teardown and stuff, and uh, yeah, I just seeing it in person, like inflating and deflating these little silicone robot parts mm -hmm. or like... Uh, in this case, I've got it set up to do a pressure sensor, but I've got another thing that I might uh, upload in a minute here that does like a meditation timer kind of thing to help you breathe uh, that I designed. Um, it's very rudimentary yet. But yeah, I basically crowd supply, um, sent us one, and I finally uh, started playing with it because my friend Samira is doing a talk soon about microfluidics and taught me about that. And she was saying how you have to like, you know, pump things into or out of the system in order to move fluids through these little channels, which is its whole own rabbit hole, of course. Uh, and I was like, oh, there's this thing. I've, and I've never actually hooked it up. And so now finally this is my chance to do it. So, yeah. Great. Now, speaking of rabbit holes, I want to I wanna get like people <laughs> have no idea what we're talking about. I want to take like an even like wider eye view on this thing. <clears throat> Arduino basically is a is a microcontroller board that users can program to uh to turn things on and off right it's a, yeah. it's a programming language for arduino so that that's you relatively user friendly if you want to get into it i think most people have kind of heard of arduino as a buzzword yeah. um and the the arduino itself is great for doing some basic stuff turning leds on and off maybe making a little small toy motor go on um, you know uh, on and off but when you really yeah. want to hook it up to bigger stuff, that's where these add-on shields come in handy, right? Right, yeah. right so far? Uh, yeah. And then the other aspect of this is the uh, crowd supply. I want, for people who are unfamiliar with crowd supply, uh, it's a platform where makers who really want to make their own add-ons, their own kits, their own... Um, it's kind of like a, a Kickstarter type environment in the sense that it's it's crowdfunding, but mm -hmm. it's more for maker hardware projects. Does that sound about right? Yeah, like by makers, for makers, all kinds of stuff. It's really cool. So crowd supply almost is like its own tool recommendation uh, on its own because it's it's a yeah, really totally. cool site to check out to see all kinds of DIY uh, hardware that's made kind of boutique hardware that's made by makers. Uh, for makers to help solve a problem. And so Programmable Air is one of these amazing projects that's kind of like a limited run, maker-made yeah. project uh, that's being sold on this particular platform. That's not I don't think there's anywhere else you're going to get this, right? Or maybe directly. I don't think so. Yeah, the, actually their official page links to Crowd Supply. So if you just go to programmableair.com, it's all one word, and it'll, like, it'll link you there at the top of the page. That's great. All right, now... I want to see this demo that you've worked out. Yeah. Let's, let's take a look at the hardware. Okay. I'm going to swap cameras real quick. Okay. Oh, yeah, there we go. So right now, here is the device. And um, so you've got two motors up here. And these are controlling pulling air in and pushing air out. And then you have three valves down here, which control basically... Oh, I love these buttons, by the way. <laughs> They're so clicky. <laughs> but these control whether or not that air can flow in or out. So you sort of um, open up a valve depending on which way you want the air to flow. So like there's a there's a vent to the outside here. This goes to a pressure sensor, so you can sense pressure within the system. 
Uh, and then you've got a few different valves. And then, for example, right now, I've got it hooked up to a syringe. So uh, it's running this demo app where this is uh, showing the pressure in the system. And you can see whether it's positive or negative pressure and also how intense it is by the brightness and the color. So if I go here, it's basically neutral pressure. And if I pull the syringe out, I'm doing negative pressure. I'm pulling a vacuum. And it's blue. It gets brighter the more I pull. And then it goes back down to zero. And then it goes back to high pressure again when I push the syringe in. So that's one example. Yeah. Uh, and now, just to, to stop you for a minute here, I feel like yeah. that's a really critical element of what makes this thing important. Is because I've, I've seen Arduino control boards that will do pumps, so they'll do motor control. But that feedback of being able to tell how much pressure is in the system, I think is really critical because I've seen like, uh, you know, ar alcohol dispensing robots, like drink, like things that will yeah, use a lot of those pumps to pump out fluid. And they're, but they're essentially pretty dumb. They'll like, they'll pump for 10 seconds and then they'll stop, but they can't really sense the pressure in the system. So that really seems to me in this introduction, like a really critical element of this, of this particular uh, board. Yeah, and I'm going to swap this out real quick. I'm reprogramming the board right now so that we can do this other thing. Oh, there we go. <laughs> and uh, whoa, I made this like balloon sock demo. So it's just a balloon inside of this sock here. And uh, basically, it's on a timer so that... Let's, let's get this further down into there. <laughs> the idea is to have like a little lotus shape or something that's 3D printed, and it'll expand and contract. So when it's expanding... For about 10 seconds, the lights are green, and the balloon is inflating, and you're supposed to be breathing in. And then you hold your breath, and then for 10 more seconds, it slowly, slowly deflates. And it's not pumping air out. It's just stopped pumping it in and uh, opened the valve so the air can slowly flow out. Uh, and that's like another, like, one of my things I was most excited to build with this. <laughs> and you can also really quickly vent the air. Uh, another cool thing for prototyping with this guy is that you can manually control the valves so that the air quickly leaves the system. Uh, so you have fully full control, even if you don't want to like program it yet. You're just testing the physical stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, you can easily do that by like, you know. So it's inflating again right now, but if I vent it, <laughs> it's <laughs> motors only, versus motors. Not only do you get the satisfaction <laughs> of the click. But you get the satisfaction of like the deflating sound. Oh, out it's of it. so satisfying! Yeah. It's so satisfying. I'm gonna swap back right now. There we go. Wait, can you see me? Yeah. Oh yeah. See ya. Cool. Now, hey, uh, yeah. Aside from cool. like, uh, I was looking at the website. There's some kind of you know art project type stuff. Uh, there's some soft robotics maybe with kind of like little actuating. Uh, balloons and things like that, but yeah. walk me through some other kinds of examples of where someone might want to use something like this. Yeah, well, we talked about drink bots. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, microfluidics, um, some other stuff I've been wanting to do. Okay, so it turns out, it turns out this is not the right application for this, but I want to share it anyway because I got really excited about it. Uh, I wanted to... Uh, make a desktop version of those wacky, waving, inflatable arm flailing tube men. Mm -hmm. You know, the ones in front of like car uh, yeah. rental play, uh, dealerships. Yeah. And it, the, like, you know, ah! so I wanted to have a notification system for my desk that would, you know, when I get an email or something, I go, ah! or like, you know, when I get a tweet, ah! <laughs> uh, yeah. But I don't think it can push air fast enough, unfortunately. Yeah, it might be um, too unless I made really, really tiny tube man. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one small tube man can do. It. <laughs> it's just based on the speed of the motor, right? Yeah. Although you know, in theory, if I, if in theory, actually, if I had, uh, if I swapped the tubes around and I reprogrammed this thing, I could get both of the motors pumping air in at the same time. Uh, so I could. It's it's the dream could come true. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and, and then the other, I think the other application I saw on the website was, and I, I, it's hard to, I, I'm, I'm thinking about this a lot with inflating things, but there is the suction aspect of it too. And someone was like mm, yes. sucking up maybe like a little component and then placing it like a little pick and place kind of suction thing. Yeah. And the fact that there's some feedback on, you know, sucking something up, but knowing that when enough suction has been applied to not suck the whole thing through the tube, right? 
Yeah, so it comes with a couple more things like this little guy, these little syringe uh, ends, and uh, not only can you attach that to the actual syringe, but there's a little, um, it's called a lure lock on here, on this other one over here. Mm -hmm. It's uh, You can actually twist one of these syringe ends onto it, and you know if you extended that, then you would have a little pick-and-place kind of guy. Uh, and then also... Speaking of suction uh, and robotics, there's this really cool kind of gripper that you can make where you fill a balloon with coffee grounds and then uh, you attach it to this guy. Uh, and for example, if you, if you pull a vacuum on that, if you suck the air out of it while it's like, you smush it onto like a screwdriver or whatever, right? You pull the air out of it and the coffee grounds all like suck together. Like if you've ever seen a vacuum packed bag of ground coffee, yeah, uh, it's the same thing. Like it goes hard, uh, but all the particles of coffee stay in the same place. So it forms like a hard gripper around the object, yeah, no matter like what it's shaped it, like. It has like a memory, like it'll remember that shape. Some, something about the exactly. coffee grounds will just lock into place in it. In it just locks into place way. with the vacuum. That's cool. And so then you can like pick it up and do stuff. But then, like, uh, as soon as you release the vacuum, of course, it lets go again. It's so cool. <laughs> All right. So what, uh, what's the pricing on the kind of the, the kit, if the, the kit someone would want in order to get started with this? I think it's about $180. Yeah, it's $175. Uh, you don't get all these extra little thingies, but honestly, I think you don't need them because they're, like, balloons and, like, a 3D printable uh, expander thing, which I'm sure is going to be on Thingiverse or whatever. Uh, and like little little valve connectors and little syringe ends, which are all things that are super generic. Like it's really convenient to have it if you want to just get started pro uh, prototyping immediately. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, you could just you could in one day uh, in the city you could collect all these things. Yeah. So yeah. All right. Uh, and that so it's 175 for the the basic kit, and then with the extra little bits, it's like 200. All right. Another great recommendation, Alex. Thanks for joining so us good. again and. Uh, yeah, you can find more about Alex uh, in the show notes down here in the bottom, and we'll have links to her social accounts and where you can catch up with what she's doing. Thanks, Donald. Have an awesome weekend. You too.